Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. This is the Vikings Garage. So today we're going to talk oil change. More specifically, direct to the Forerunner, but a lot of these tips do apply to all cars in general. And uh, we, I'm going to show you basically the way I do the oil change on my car. You might do it differently. Honestly, I'm here to learn too, guys. Uh, with my years with Toyota, some of these techniques and tips I've developed over the years and I learned from other people. So let's all learn from one another and see what tools are good for what and what tools I use. I also want to take this opportunity to let you guys know that I'm starting a new series in the channel in which I'm going to give you guys all these tips and techniques I've learned over the years. Uh, as I'm getting a little older and wiser, I hope, uh, I'd like to think that there are certain things that you definitely want to pass on. You don't want them to die with you. And I've been very fortunate to have been around some very uh, intelligent and smart people, some uh, very um, amazing people, per se, that have taught me all these things. And uh, I want to pay it forward by passing it on to you guys. So... Do subscribe, like these videos, and uh, I'm going to keep them coming. Some of them are very basic, but I can assure you that here and there, you will learn something new every time. For uh, this oil change, I'll be trying a new oil. I've never tried this before. Just always make sure it's 0W20. We're going to be adding some Lucas. Always OEM gaskets, guys. Get 10 of them with this little package OEM filter every single time we will be doing an upgrade for the drain plug with a magnetic one and last but not least as promised i'm going to be doing the upgraded oem metal oil filter housing i'll show you how to do it when you're done removing the cover what you will need is a 14 mil 3 8 with an extension you will break it loose Obviously, do be aware of your surroundings and try to make sure that you don't make a mess. I personally find this mesh mat to be perfect for the job. Um, it does come pretty strong on its way out, but as you can see here at 5,000 miles, my oil is already dark, and that's why I do it every five. That gasket, guys, remove it. Don't forget to remove it so you don't double gasket. And as you can see here, we're just gonna make a small little change from this OEM plug to this um, drain plug with a magnet on it, which is pretty powerful, I must say. And the gasket it comes with, toss it. Always, always OEM gaskets. All right, let's talk, oil filter wrenches. This is the one that I choose, there's a reason for it flat rate you don't have to find the exact position I'll show you where I mean in a second these on the other end much better but you always have to use it this way there's two different brands they do the same exact job this one being strong this definitely stay away from it plastic on this stretches and it ends up never removing the filter properly Personally, this is the oil filter wrench that I use along with an half inch extension, socket, and a ratchet. If that doesn't work, grab yourself a breaker bar. Never ever take these filters with a power tool. You will see at the end of the video why. This is what you should be expecting with an OEM filter, and I will show you in a second what that plastic piece is for. Once you got the cover out of the way, all you need is a 3 8 extension to break loose of your plug. Uh, you remove the plug and you should find an O-ring. That O-ring will be tossed. Now this plastic piece we talked about, this is its function. It's to minimize the spill when you're removing the oil filter housing. And uh, at this point you might want to toss the O-ring out so you don't reuse it. You always put new and fresh O-rings that are provided with the filter. 
clean this little plug on both ends. And now I'm also gonna show you a trick. This can oftentimes be a little hard to remove, but do not worry. With a little trim tool, this process, it will be a breeze. Watch how it pops out. See, no worries there. Now, the way I do it is I apply the new O-ring before I even remove the entire housing. You press it onto the housing first, make sure it's flush. Once it is flush, and don't worry about the oil, the oil is actually good to lubricate it. Then you apply the clean cap back on. This cap, guys, you don't have to go crazy with it. It's literally only nine foot pounds of torque to uh, close it up. As far as the second O-ring, if you're not sure, the box itself shows you a really good graphic to tell you exactly where it's supposed to go. This is very key on this entire process, as you do not want any unwanted uh, leaks later on. When reinstalling the housing back, remember, all it takes is 18 foot-pounds of torque to torque it down. All you need is your half-inch drive and a ratchet. That's it. No power tools, guys. As far as your drain plug, key is always a new gasket and when it comes time to tightening it up, as I'm sure you know, righty tighty, lefty loosey uh, and tools are all you need and the magic number here I believe is 29 foot pounds of torque. As you can see, you don't have to go really crazy with this. So, you pour the oil of your choice, make sure it's 0W20, this is where the oil goes and then as always, make sure you check your oil level. The dipstick is right over here, and it has to be in between the lines. So feel free to check as many times as you want. Oftentimes, it's a little hard to tell, but there you have it, right in between the lines, and you're good to go. As I will now here demonstrate, you do have to swap around the longer tube on the center of the metal housing with your plastic one. And to do this, you must apply sideways pressure near the top of the tube while pushing in at the bottom. This will allow the tabs on the bottom of the tube to be removed from, its, from the housing and uh, needs to be done on both housings. Now to accomplish this, you must remove the tube on both sides and what you're gonna do is you're gonna swap out spring and your bottom plate. Remember, when you reinstall this plate, the doomed side must be facing up. Uh, you then put your spring in there. It's actually pretty simple. Center it up, and this part can be a little tricky, but the key is that you place the tabs under the feet inside the housing by pushing it on an angle to the bottom of the tube. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Do stay tuned because I got many more coming your way. Some of these videos will be pretty short because some of these things are pretty simple to do, but they're important nonetheless. So before you know it, you too will be fixing your car for free. As always guys, thank you for watching and I will catch you on the next one.